Hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is part 8 of this little dynamo build and as you can see I'm sitting here with a brass casting which is kind of over engineered for, for this little build. I had hoped to get an aluminium one and I arrived too late on a very wet miserable day where no one felt much like pouring aluminium and there was a run of brass going through so the the girl quickly moulded this up for me and they poured it in brass it's not bad it's got just a little bit of shrinkage probably more than the aluminium I might have had but not very much on that sort of size and it seems to be a fairly nice casting and we won't really know till we sort of eat into it I had hoped to make a start on the commutator here, the copper commutator, which is quite an involved part, and that's what I was going to do this weekend, but my copper bar and stuff didn't arrive through the post, so I thought I'll go up and get this. It's a wet pouring day, as you'll see, and the job was a bit rushed and I had a friend with me so I didn't get a whole lot of video of the casting process but you've seen it all before have a look at my other video on the last build pretty much the same process we're back here tonight and I guess the the procedure is to clean it up whether we set it up like that in the forge or and, and face the bottom of it first it's probably the best way give it a good rub up with a file the first thing it needs is some of the sand washing out of the grooves and a good scrub up that'll be the first thing and then I guess it wants setting up in the four jaw and one end facing and probably the other end too a bit and then we can set it up nice and flush with a with a round bar in there to hold it and we can face these two edges and we've got a then we'll have a square box these roofs need to be cleaned out to 10 millimeters there's a fair bit to take out of them really um, so this had a bit of a rock in it, so the first operation really was to take this top edge down a bit. There's plenty of oversize on it, and this, this groove really wants to clean up to 12 millimeters, so it wants to be sort of fairly well down there. There's, there's plenty of room on this casting. So I've gone through till that's cleaned up, and I might even go a bit more have a look with the ruler that's just on 13 millimeters there and it seems to be pretty uniform and nice so might take another millimeter off here I think actually we might leave it on because it's not going to hurt anything up there and better to be safe than sorry so next thing is to turn that round turn it over and face the bottom I guess that's going to be the next job these are just basic facing operations they don't need to be set up particularly well but that's cleaning up really nicely I'm going to take those burrs off this bit of that's left on here is going to muck that up because it's not going to sit here on right on the edge and cock it sideways and I don't like that very much so I might just give that a clean up on the end there before I start
but if we hold it nice and thick on the webs there I don't think there'll be any problems it's a fairly soft malleable casting so I think too much pressure you could do some damage but we might just face this off roughly before we set the rest up just so that it doesn't kick it sideways so let's clean the end up nowhere near the length yet um, the drawing says that I drew says 60 mil and that's still about 66 and when I look at the actual project 55 might be more realistic so because this had a bit of taper on the ends thanks Myford boy for pointing out that it needed it uh, this probably isn't particularly square either so I haven't really cleaned this up particularly accurately or cleanly just to get rid of that bit of flashing off the end of it there next job is I'm going to turn it out with this face out and face the bottom of it to a nice to finish size which is about 25 mil from the the top here I think so it's going to need probably 2-3 mil off it we'll do that and we should be right to machine the edges then so let's set up that way around this is nice and level and flush and sits nice on the back of the chuck here which is a pretty easy setup let's take a cut a bit of shrinkage in the middle of the casting there but we've allowed for that have a look we'll probably get more in the brass than in aluminium but it's cleaned up there on all the corners so it's just a matter of getting in and taking some off now anyway that's cleaned up reasonably well there's a soft spot in the middle there now I don't think even if I go right through it's going to ever get a good finish on it just there but there's no hard spots so I haven't hit any bits of broken drill or anything or bits of steel or copper or junk in it it all seems to be pretty good casting so we've got that cleaned up next job I guess is the, the opposing sides they should be pretty straightforward too so that's the next setup. I've cut a couple of bits of copper to go in there on the machine surfaces just to start so they don't mark. Now this is adjusted up first so it should be parallel to this jaw and this jaw um, out here. So cleaning this up should clean it up square. You know, take a bit off the back before it takes it off the front because this has got a little bit of a little bit of angle on here for the mould release. So yeah probably I'm just going to clean it up so it just cleans up there because there's not a lot of spare room this way um, and we're going to set it probably measure this and make the other one the same from the middle so that's what I'm going to do is just clean this up till it just touches that edge there and we might call that close enough to spec So that's just starting to clean up there nice all the way along probably the old wooden pattern's not quite as accurate as I would have liked but I think it's going to clean up okay Anyway, that's the second side set up there and cleaned up nice. So we've got the top and the bottom and that side and that side should all be pretty square to each other. Fingers crossed. 
Now the secret will be to get one of these other ends nice and square and to work out the overall length and trim them to length and we'll have basic box done except for these grooves. Anyway that's the next setup. We've cut down the piece of car copper and put them there. So this should be nice and parallel to the jaws this way and this way. I had a look at this end we faced before and just checked it with a square and that was pretty good anyway. So this back nice and tight against the base plate and that should be pretty good. Now our overall length here is 66 millimeters. It wants to be down to at least 60. Our armature so far ended up at 45 millimeters long. Still haven't found a couple of grub screws. I did find some smaller head screws for there. I reckon 15 millimeters for the, uh, the the commutator too will be plenty. So let's work for 60. It's always a smart idea before you start an interrupted cut to make sure that everything's going to clear and look square and nice. That looks pretty good to me. And that's just cleaned up there on the tips. We're only doing the same as we did last time. I want to take about three mil off and turn it around and take the rest off the other end. So let's have a look when we get a bit further along. So there we go. That's the four sides and the bottom and the top all machined up pretty square. I'm pretty pleased with that. cleaned up all along. I've given it a, just broken the edges a bit with a bit of emery paper. So it was quite sharp, it still is. If we have a look at the magnet, there's still a bit to come out of each side there. Just on each side. So it needs two 10mm grooves, one down there and one down there, mill a minute. There's a few ways we could do that. One is I could sit down with a file and the go no go gauge, a bit of tin with a slot in it, and dress these up nice and dress the bottoms up nice and then dress the middle up until it till it slides in there. And that's probably not beyond the realms of impossibility and it's probably a good little exercise too for me to do but there's a bit of work in it really getting it right like that and it's not really the, the quick and easy way to do it so so I got up this morning and I made this jig it's got a step on there to get this nice and parallel I've drilled and tapped one hole in here and drilled one and then spotted the other one through here to get the other hole. And that'll go in the tool post of the lathe. The next job is to tap these other two holes and bolt them all up and have a look and see how it's going to work. So this is back in and it's set up nice and true against the face plate. So yeah, scratch that. I had troubles with keeping things tight and making it work. And if I built it again, I'd probably improve it. And the tool post won't stay tight because I haven't put the pin in it yet. And all those sort of things so rather than mess around and do it I just thought well let's fit this up with a file it'd be a good exercise and it won't take all that long I've got the outsides fitting pretty nice and reasonably good finish I just got to finish up the insides here 
and spend a bit more time on it and we'll have another look. And I've been messing around with this for probably an hour I guess. Not even because I put that washing machine on and it takes 39 minutes and it's just finishing. So it didn't take a whole lot of, of fitting to get that to slide all the way through. There's just a tight spot in that end. I might just fiddle with that and get it right. And I guess the next thing is to clean up all the outside and, and get it up to looking a bit Mickey Mouse. And so there's just a tight spot there for some reason. We might just do that. And then we can probably go ahead and drill those and put a couple of screws in to hold that in place. So camera went flat and while I was waiting for it to recharge I put these two screws in here. I'm not particularly happy with this but it's going to have to do. I've marked them and put them in and they're nice and flush and they'll look alright when they've cleaned up. But I was only going to put one bigger screw in the middle. That was going to be the idea. And then there'd be room to drill here for magnets. There's still room. It's just a little bit tighter. And probably I can manage to put three little 5mm magnets in the end there. Without too many issues. So we'll see how we go with that. But that's that part pretty much finished. And that's where that goes. And I think we've probably got to put a spacer underneath here to give us enough clearance in that plate to put a hole so that it doesn't come through the outside. It's a little bit close to the top there, I think, maybe. There are other ways we could deal with that. And I'll have a think about it, but at the moment, I'm just going to put a spacer under them and drill them. And the same on the other end. I'm really pleased with the proportions of this. It's a little bit taller than I had sort of envisaged, which I really like. And it's a little bit shorter this way than maybe I thought it would be. So it's quite pleasant and Victorian, and I, I really like that. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That, that's this week's work. And another update fairly soon. There's work to be done on the commutator, which hopefully the materials will be here. Um, these plates have got to be fitted. Got to make some bushes and fit them on the ends nicely. So there's a there's still plenty to do. And more soon. Don't forget to press the like button and to subscribe.